and welcome back to the channel capsule here land is here for another eve equals feeling guide for alpha clones and this will be my first min mata hill i've uh, been mainly doing the galente and amar ship well because i was first and, for all, and foremost a, um, a laser a pilot in the beginning and then i fell in love with drones and so galente and amar are the ships that I know best in game and fly most in game. And um, be honest, I've been a bit overlooking the uh, Amar, uh, oh, well, not the Amar, the Minmata uh, uh, ship line uh, because, because, because I don't know uh, actually. Uh, and um, to be honest, this um, Starbird that I'm gonna be showcasing today is really a, a very nice surprise. It's a highly versatile ship. Um, you could go with a long range or a brawler build, even though I will be showcasing a long range fit because I think this is the more natural um, um, for the for the ship. But you could you could go for a brawler. But to be honest, uh, I feel the rupture is more aligned with a brawling build, so uh, I will be showcasing that in a, in in a future video. And you can basically clone whatever I will be putting on the rupture for the stabber and it will do fine. It's also versatile because you can go either shield or armor tanking. Both would would be uh, equally um, good and close in terms of, uh, of performance. So it's really uh, something that you could consider whatever you're coming from, a shield tank or armor tank, this hull will fit nicely with your, your traits and it can be balanced very nicely. So um, let's take a look now at the uh, overall ship. Um, so the appearance is, is quite iconic. This is one of the, the hulls uh, that everyone in EVE online or ECOs will instantly um, recognize. It's been uh, very popular uh, uh, in the You may like or dislike personally. I, I find it pretty ugly. I don't really like the, 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 the ship. Uh, how it looks, but uh, as I said, flying it is really is really enjoyable. So um, kind of mixed feeling on that. It goes along with uh, very uh, different skins that you can either uh, purchase or gain in game. So you see here, just showcasing a bit the, the different uh, uh, skin that you can that you can have personally. I I do like the the purity or the smoke gray. Those are the two that I. If I had the, the ISK for, I, I would potentially uh, uh, consider for, for the ship. In terms of um, intrinsic hull uh, bonuses, what you have is from your medium cannon operation. So you gain uh, an extra in accuracy fall of um, uh, 37.5 fully skilled. This is why basically I, I tend to say that this hull is more naturally inclined for long, long range build and you will see the performance in terms of um, a cannon range when we, we will go to the to the fitting and you get also a nice reduction in your activation time as this is basically the um, sort of the downfall from the cannon they are very slow to fire so anything that increase your cycle time is good on the other hand being slow to fire to get a, a pretty strong alpha damage uh, which uh, in terms of opening or volley fire is uh, is quite nice um, also you get from your your cruiser command bonus a five percent in in flight velocity which make that ship pretty fast um, naturally and um, you, you see we will see that uh, fully skilled you get flight velocity of over 400 meters per second uh, in there which is quite attractive i must say in terms of the uh, the other uh, stats so the defense bear defense is uh, about 9.5k and it is quite well balanced in between shield armor and structures and that's why I'm, i was saying previously that you could go shield tanking yes you get a bit more shield hit points than armor hit points so that should lead you to being more of a shield tank but when you look at the resistance profile you see that basically your armor is uh, is overall better in terms of uh, uh, resistance that what you have on average for your um shield part so that's where i'm saying the balance is where your heart lies 
you can go armor, you can go shield, you won't go wrong. Uh, Capacitor-wise, this is where the ship is, in my opinion, a bit constrained. Um, and uh, one of its maybe point of attention, you need to be very careful in managing your, your cap, even though your weapon don't use cap. When you go into encounters, when you need to activate modules, that that, that is a bit short, uh, in my opinion. And I, I try to compensate either with skills, battle uh, cruiser engineering, and the uh, engineering rigs, but that was not sufficient. Um, and so I still feel that a battery is something that you need uh, on the whole, uh, absolutely. In terms of um, tracking speed, scan resolution, uh, it's okay for a cruiser, but it's nothing good or bad. Your, your lock time is, is pretty adequate. You don't need to uh, take that into uh, attention in, in your build. And the flight velocity, the bear is already good, but on skills, you get something which is uh, quite fast and with its inertia modifier, quite nimble um, as well. So in terms of fittings for the high slot, no surprise, strike cannons, yay! And you can see here, optimal range 23, accuracy fold of 30. So it means that I have a range of about 50 kilometers and I'm still above half effective with the strike cannons. So that is huge for a, a, a cruiser. If you look back at the Moller, which I, I already designed as a long range um, a kiting ship, uh, the, the range was around 35 kilometer cold. Uh, so this is this is this is really good, and when you go uh, hot, you can reach for one or two strikes, depending on how you you calculate your your activation uh, compared to your cannon cycle time, the activation of the of the tracking computer. You can get two two shots um, of of the strike cannon at up to eighty kilometers. Yes, eighty eight zero kilometers range, which is very very good for a cruiser so that's why i said this ship is really most likely the best uh, range kiting fit for an alpha clone that you can um, that you can get tracking speed is a bit on the on the low end so fast moving target you will struggle so you better focus uh, on those first and be careful for anything that would skip and get into the 10 less kilometer range and that is why for the um, mid slot, I get a warp scrambler and a webby fire. That's my standard loadout. Um, when I, I start filling the, the mid slot, I always start with those tools because it helps in tremendously uh, managing fast moving target and any extra then I, I can push into um, something else. If you feel comfortable, you can remove one or the other or depending on the ship's type that you, you're fighting is you, you hardly ever see MWD chip, then you can uh, remove the scrambler and then I would recommend a target painter just to help the strike cannon be a bit more uh, effective at range and boosting a bit the uh, overall damage profile of your, of your ship. Uh, to complement that, I have a, a, a medium drone. Um, the drone there will will be there to finish off uh, the fast moving target uh, uh, again but with a range of uh, 25 kilometers there's nothing that you can do the ship will be orbiting in between 30 35 to 50 and so the drone will not be, be really useful so you can put any drone you like usually what i tend to do is complement the damage profile of the high slot with the, the drone. So I would I would technically have put there um, a Namar drone with EM damage, but um, I was not sure exactly what would, or what would be the state of the ship when it would be reaching the 10 kilometers. So I went for something a bit uh, uh, in between and I had, to be honest, also plenty of um, Vespas left and so that's why uh, I, I put that uh, that drone in looking at the damage profile you see here that that you have like a, a 210 in terms of uh, turret dps complemented with the the 25 from the from the drone but um you shouldn't worry too much if you refer back to the the Mahler video the Mahler was at 280 
and with that DPS level was able to complete tier 6 encounters in about 15 minutes. With this ship and this DPS basically you are at 17 to 18 minutes um, on part time on the tier 6 encounter, so not a big difference, but where the difference lies is uh, with its ability to, to better handle the tier 7 encounters because you will be at safer uh, range and orbit and you will be able to manage much more efficiently tier 7 encounters uh, than with the Malo. The Malo can handle it well, it's not an issue on that, but the, um, the Stabber will feel more secure uh, overall managing the, the tier 7. Might take a, a, a bit more time but anyway, um, you will you will feel safer, and that is important. On the low low slots, so two mandatory elements, something to repair. So uh, either the shield booster or the the armor wrapper, um, that is really really essential, especially when you go for the the tier seven because the the ship will have the range to uh, to catch you. And the other one is of course the tracking computers, just to extend a bit. Um, that range in terms of uh, accuracy fall off or um, just the base range uh, of the of the weapons and improve a bit your tracking speed uh, in the albeit 10 percent on on 10 on tracking speed just don't give you that much but anything is uh, useful it's it's uh, really for the range that I'm, I'm using it and uh, you can use it hot as well when something is really in your in your hot zone less than 10 kilometers you can activate the tracking computer and that will um, give you 500 so 50 percent increase in your tracking speed and then changing orbit can make the difference and you can maybe get one or two shots on the target while the drone uh, finish it up the other two slots they are basically whatever you like um, you, you can be uh, flexible in there personally i don't feel that any uh, speed uh, module uh, afterburner mwd is necessary you get already a very base uh, 414 meter per second base speed that is uh, quite sufficient to maintain orbit in there so i went for uh, a battery uh, and the capacitor battery is, was not the the first item that I that I put in there. To be honest, I I, I, I felt silly in the first part and put a, a shield hardener saying, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna make it a bit more tanky. But basically, you don't have the cap um, necessary for that. You can see here, I'm, I'm two minute thirty one second far from cap stable. And uh, when I when I run into the the T seven encounters, that was an issue for me. So uh, the battery is really something for T7. I would say it's a mandatory element for T6 uh, because you are outside of the enemy uh, effective range. You could put something else uh, in place. And the the other items that I personally would recommend is a, a gyro stabilizer, a bit more DPS um, uh, in there, reduce the activation time, so you will you will shoot faster. And so combining activating the tracking computer, the gyro stabilizer with uh, starting your opening strike means that you can nicely land at least two shots um, on the uh, enemy ships at 80 kilometer range so that is that is quite uh, useful when you're targeting the the, the, the fast frigate or interdictors that that moves um, toward you and you you want to prevent them uh, in the the internal so weapon rigs very very conventional um, uh, collision accelerators flat damage burners and then a burst aerator for reducing further the uh, activation time and for the engineering rigs so i went for the capacitor management so uh, um, a circuit prototype reducing the, the uh, recharge time and a memory cell just to increase the um, overall cap size i didn't went into the tier one or tier two because one they are expensive as, as hell and uh, the ships weapons and and every module you see there comes from my own pocket i don't have a, a corp that sustains that for me so um i need to be careful as well in my spending and i did prefer investing into uh, the weapons and, and, and shields rather than uh, into the uh, the capacitor management the battery anyway um, I don't think that going for a tier one on the on the engineering rigs would make any significant difference the battery is really what you need uh, uh, in there 
So in terms of skills, just to be uh, fully transparent, I'm nearly um, at level five for all the uh, cruiser skills. So it means the uh, um, cruiser uh, um, flying skills. Oops, let's take a, a, a direct look. So in terms of the uh, a cruiser command, I'm at level five. Navigation, I would say not necessarily useful on that uh, because you will not fit afterburner or, or MWD. Of course, that stands for a PVE operation for PVP might be a different matter and you may want to substitute one of the models for um, one of uh, one of those so then those skills uh, become really uh, useful shield and armor you see I'm, I'm fully maxed as well you can go one or the other uh, no big deal uh, defense so the cruiser defense I'm at level five and that makes a, a huge difference as well in, in terms of the overall hit points that I have it doesn't touch on the resistance but it gives you a, a stronger hull to play with in terms of engineering so you see i'm uh, still cruiser engineering level five and even with that only two minute 30 which is a bit um, too small to my taste and for handling um, tier seven encounters very uh, effectively so even though I'm fully skilled, it is not enough uh, in that uh, in that perspective. Of course, you can then use electronic system if you want to change a bit on the on the modules and, and get a bit more effectiveness in terms of the, the pulsion jamming or the signal disruption or, or whatever else you want to uh, to fit in. And cannon wise, uh, medium cannon is already fully skilled, level five the only thing that i need to train um, to gain a bit more range and a bit more dps is the medium cannon upgrade but that will not make a huge difference so the performance that you see here uh, the 200 dps might go uh, 210 215 max and that is just key message here is what you see here on the screen is probably what you can get maxed out from uh, the ship for an alpha clone okay just that um that that key message in there so in terms of how much does it cost to get uh that and i'm, I'm not gonna look at the the skill point itself but more on the hull price so this this basically would cost around 38 million 38 40 million uh to get the hull in the same state so of course if you mine the ore refine it buy the blueprint and build the ship can reduce the cost significantly you only have the the, the modules and the internals to um, to fit in but so you see this is not overly um, um, expensive and this is quite a versatile ship as i said not much difference in terms of east per hour uh, compared to the uh, the motor which is the other uh, long range build that we have seen so far and so that's why i'm saying this is for me the ship I would take for long range uh, a kiting, being for tier 6 or for um, tier 7 encounters. And certainly for tier 7 encounters, this is a ship I would take uh, over the, the matter for tier 6. Most likely, I would pick up a brawler build, uh, either the MOA or the uh, Rupture, because they, they would be inherently more, more uh, efficient in the farming ISK in there and and we will see what will be the the, the time difference uh, uh that we will we will get there so that's all for me the only thing that remains in this video are the two combat demonstrations so i did a tier 6 and you will see the tier 6 was fairly uh, uneventful the tier 7 was another matter so i was lucky to have when i i shoot it that um, that video a tier 7 encounters which was available so i took the opportunity to take the ship in and as i said i i was kind of um ditch in the middle with my my shield hardener and i was running out of cap and i was not sustaining my shield booster so i had to uh, fly back uh, at base get a battery in and you will see the the the, the encounters is split in two one where i had the um, the hardener and I took a beating and then one where I had the, um, the battery pack 
and I was managing fairly easily and comfortably from uh, from range. So a good illustration on how a module can basically make a big difference in terms of how your ship handle and um, what you can basically uh, get out of it. Okay, that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed the video and find the content interesting. If so, um, just give me a like or a comment if you disagree and want to uh, to make me uh, some some useful recommendation in terms of uh, video quality or build. Uh, and if you want to be notified of anything that I would push onto the channel, just hit the subscribe button. That gain that helped me also gain more visibility and um, still push me further to continue making content uh, for the channel. In the meantime, fly safe, enjoy the game and see you in the next video.